The European Union has been good for business generally for the past 25 years, particularly since the Single European Act. But it's run so far ahead of citizens that the citizens don't realise there is a European Union. They certainly don't realise there is a European Union that's valuable to citizens. And in a crisis period like now, I think we're going to find that a new emphasis will come from the street and from politicians to say this union will only uh, survive if it meets not just the needs of business but the needs of citizens. I'm thinking here of protection, of, of welfare, of cross-border uh, security, of cross-border policing, of cross-border um, exchange of data. If you're ill, for example, tomorrow in Spain, to make sure that you can, through the internet, um, get access to your medical records. So I think it's a question of finding the balance between security, but which is respectful of human rights, without intrusive surveillance, without turning every citizen into a suspect. It's finding that balance between um, security, collective security, where the citizen has got to play as much a role as anybody else, and um, protecting our, um, our inalienable rights. Uh, of course, for some countries it's more difficult where we don't have a written constitution. And Europe, of course, is a patchwork. Uh, different countries have got different arrangements. I think Europe's got to find a, uh, a convergence, if you like, uh, but certainly to find a balance which I would say is more in favour of protecting our rights than a knee-jerk reaction on security. Europe is setting some really good um, protocols um, and regulations in place. What we really need now is for, for, for those protocols to distill downwards uh, to law enforcement uh, agencies themselves and we have to improve our communications. You know, we have some very good communication tools and agencies such as Eurojust and Europol but often enough it's simple things. It's being able to identify your counterpart in a foreign country for argument's sake if you're carrying out an investigation. Fraud's a global phenomenon and from a law enforcement point of view we understand now that obviously there are organised groups, uh, crime, organised crime groups that we are targeting who aren't necessarily in our region. That's something new for us. People can move freely across borders and so can criminals. So what we've seen is a growing phenomenon of criminals cross border action uh, and particularly two types of examples we could use. One is cybercrime where we could have criminals from one country residing in another country committing crime in a third country. And as a police force, that makes it very difficult to actually detect and investigate that trail of criminal activity. So uh, one of the things we're working is the adage, prevention is better than cure, is actually trying to, to target, harden, if you like, people working online, doing business online to make themselves far more secure and safe, and therefore actually reduce the crime that way. And another way is freight crime. And again, the movement of freight across borders is particularly uh, principle of the European Union, good trade across companies, and again what we're seeing is the trade of criminality across countries as well. Why the whole borderless, not just the virtually borderless area, but the factually borderless area has been created with a Schengen area. Now, the UK is not part of this, but we would obviously uh, encourage the UK to be part of this at some point, but the r rationale behind this is um, um, sorry, business can travel across borders, but so can crime. Now, what we must avoid is that the police services are lagging behind crime in that respect. And this is why, as part of the borderless, the actual borderless area within Schengen, we have established a series of databases designed to help um, uh, um, law enforcement authorities to cope with the um, increasing demand um, on their cross-border activities. So there's some good knowledge out there, some good experience, and um, it's my own belief that you know it's best to share, share best practice where we can, uh, but at the same time recognising, particularly in the Human Rights Act, the, uh, the principles, one of the shining principles of course, is the, uh, the right to Article 8, the right, right to privacy. 
In 1992, the Maastricht Treaty introduced the concept of citizenship of the European Union, which confers on every European citizen a fundamental and personal right to move freely and reside without reference to an economic activity. The Amsterdam Treaty, which came into force in 1999, further strengthened the rights linked to a European Union citizenship. In fact, we have more workers, for example, from Poland than Britain has. Although here the access is not limited by law, but we are neighbors, and so we left some for going to Britain. But uh, there are more than 900,000 in Germany. They are only under the limit that they still need a permit, but they get it. It is only a question if it can be done uncontrolled or not in a situation where you are an immediate neighbor in a transition period.